Hey there, safety enthusiasts. This is Tim Ludwig from safetydoc.com. It's good to have you here. Welcome to Insights into Your Safety Culture podcast, which is simulcast as a blog on safetydoc.com. Join us on safety-doc.com for 30 years of research, stories, videos, books, and blogs, all to get your safety culture fix. Now let's get to it. Bless her heart. Taking personal responsibility for others. I was having a great conversation with a new steering team who was charged with launching a behavioral safety program at a plant that made feminine hygiene products. It was in the southern United States. I was making grand statements like, one key to an ideal safety culture that dramatically reduces injuries is for everyone to take responsibility for safety. And all the folks in the room nodded vigorously. They drank the Kool-Aid. They had volunteered to be on the team to help build the safety culture and to help their fellow workers. This being a feminine hygiene products plant meant that they were mostly women. So I have a trick I like to play on groups like this, and, and I had these ladies right where I wanted them. First, I get them all to agree with the statement, everyone has to be responsible for their own safety and the safety of others. And everyone always agrees, sometimes enthusiastically. Then I pretend to change the subject and ask, what was the last injury that you've had here at the plant? So in this particular plan, I found out that a high school intern was carrying a stack of papers down some stairs near the front office area. She slipped and she fell down the stairs and broke her ankle. When the safety pro of the team told us the details, all the ladies were in a stir. One exclaimed, well, bless her heart. Is that Doris's daughter who worked over here during the summer? Well, that young lady, she, she played volleyball and she probably had to miss her, her final season in high school. You know, what a wonderful, caring group of women. You know, they were even planning to have a bake sale for this young lady. But then I dropped the other shoe in my little trick. I interrupted and pointed at the heart blesser and, and asked sternly, Well, why did you let that happen? One could hear the collective breath intake as, as the indignation grew. Well, she was an intern. She didn't even work for us. She was probably carrying too much and, and didn't hold the handrail. She didn't even work in my department. We work out in the plant where there are real dangers like molten plastic and sharp tools. She was up in the front office helping the secretaries. And then I continued with the punchline. Now hold on, ladies. I just said that everyone has to take responsibility for safety. And you all nodded. I then said, in mocking confusion, so therefore you take responsibility for her fall and broken ankle. So... Then I paused for effect. Why did you let it happen? They continued complaining as they justified how this situation was different and her fall was not their responsibility. They weren't happy campers at this point. I, I thought I made a critical mistake and, and lost their trust for the rest of the workshop. You know, I was about to apologize. But then something subtle, yet culturally significant happened a couple women started asking the right questions. Well, well, where did this happen? What else was going on? Had she been given some kind of training? Finally, it was the bake sale planner who asked, she fell down the stairs, right? Were, were those the stairs by the entrance door out front? You know, the ones near the, the outside courtyard where some of us go for our smoke breaks? Yeah, yeah. Those, those stairs get kind of wet, and, and when we walk back in after a dewy morning, it, it... And it was at this point that the heart blesser, quietly, yet clearly said, Gals, you know, I've slipped on those very stairs when they've been wet. And many of the women nodded. When I, when I slipped and caught myself, I thought, I wish somebody would take care of this. And there were more nods. Some around the room made predictable statements like, They should do something. They need to put down some type of non-slip tape on those stairs. But then the heart blesser uttered a statement worth a thousand bake sales. I guess when I had slipped before, I, I was embarrassed, so I never told anybody. 
And the group got real quiet. Then more quiet when the heart blesser said, as if to herself, And if I, if I would have said something, something could have been done about it. And that poor young girl would have played volleyball last season. Lesson delivered. By not taking personal responsibility to report the near miss, that stair hazard was not fixed, and this led to an injury. Everyone who experienced those wet stairs was responsible. Taking personal responsibility for the safety of others does not only mean coaching each other when we see a need to reduce risk-taking, it also means we report our own behavior and our own incidents, even if those are close calls and even if they may be embarrassing. Because when we do, we may help somebody down the line, perhaps somebody we don't even know. This is Tim breaking into this podcast to tell you about my book, Dysfunctional Practices That Kill Your Safety Culture. A manager finds himself on top of a stepladder. A woman removes the guard to her machine. A worker is not wearing her safety glasses in the plant. A rustabout uses the wrong size clamp instead of retrieving the right tool. A supervisor teaches a new worker to take a shortcut. A mechanic climbs on top of an active machine to find the oil leak. Why? Why do these folks do these things? Is it because they're stupid? We'll find out. Read or listen to the first chapter of Dysfunctional Practices on safetydoc.com. Dysfunctional Practices, available now on Amazon and Lulu.com. And now, back to our podcast. This unfortunate story can be played out almost anywhere, with sobering lessons. My friend Steve Roberts from Safety Performance Solutions tells a more tragic story of being called down to a cement manufacturing plant down in Texas. The plant had suffered a fatality. Steve was, among other things, helping with the investigation. He tells us that a man was carrying about 40 pounds of compound over his shoulder, walking on a skyway positioned above the huge vats of mixed product. There are grates in the walkway that could be removed so the different compounds could be poured directly into these vats. And as he walked, he stepped on a grate that buckled and collapsed, and the man fell into the machinery below, suffocating him in the cement vac. As the discussion during the investigation ensued, Steve recalls a supervisor saying at one point during the investigation meeting, We all walked over that grate. You know, it would clatter around because it it had warped over time as we carried our heavy loads over it. I just started walking, you know, around it instead of on it because it scared me. And the supervisor ultimately arrived at a sobering conclusion. You know, I should have reported that grate and got it fixed. Heck, you know, any of us could. And and if, if any of us would have, well, poor Joe would have... And his voice trails off. Indeed, a sobering thought that anyone in that plant could have reported that failed piece of equipment and saved that person's life. Back to the feminine hygiene plant. Why did this injury to the young woman happen? To be sure, it's simple to conclude that the young woman did not use the handrail and chalk it up to human error. She was careless young, stupid? But what was the solution to human errors? Typically, it'd be more exhortations for everyone to use the handrails with signs and meetings. Now, this may change behavior, but you know, only for a week before we all drift back to our old habits and the incidents reoccur. The next most likely conclusion, also easy for us to arrive at, is they, meaning management, did not maintain the equipment and facilities adequately to reduce the hazard of the stairs. The typical us versus them drama then ensues, and workers blame management for the problem. And then management are pointing out the workers as a source of the problem. I hope the irony of this situation is not lost on anyone out there when you think back to your first grade teacher saying, when you point at somebody else, you know, with your index finger, 
you have three fingers pointing back at yourself. Indeed, the missing factor key to these scenarios was a safety culture where everyone takes responsibility for the safety of others. You take responsibility for the safety of others through reporting your own near misses and minor injuries, identifying hazards formally and, and telling your boss about them informally, and, and coaching peers when anyone sees behaviors that put workers at risk. You take responsibility for the safety of others when you give safety talks at tailgate meetings, when you join safety committees and praise each other for their safe practices. You take responsibility for the safety of others when you actively participate in your safety culture. Now, it's quite probable that you personally have never slipped on those stairs or stepped around that grate. But it is quite probable that you personally have had an incident that happened in your area where you were too embarrassed, scared, or thought too little of it to report. And... Because you didn't report it, or maybe just complained about it to a coworker or maybe your management, you did not do your part to build a culture in your workplace where we freely report our incidents so others can learn and act on them. But if you set the right example and others see your courage, they may also see how speaking up can help make a safer workplace. Then they'll muster the same courage to do the same. Our safety management systems must be built correctly to support a culture of reporting. This means no attribution and punishment, no embarrassing long forms, and most importantly, you have a process where close calls get publicly acted on by addressing the hazards and the systems that put that worker in the position to have taken the risk. Excellent safety management systems reinforce people for reporting. This does not mean giving out a prize or a pat on the back. Reporters get reinforced for, for reporting because things got better because they reported. It's as if they would say, I reported a problem and it got fixed. Everyone will know that I did my part to build our safety culture into one where reporting is what we do. It's what we value and what we expect. You know, folks, bake sales are not enough. Thanks. See you next time. This podcast is a production of safetydoc.com and is copyrighted by Timothy Ludwig, Ph.D., all rights reserved. For those small doses of inspiration, visit safetydoc.com. If you would like Dr. Ludwig to speak at your corporate or society safety function, simply use the contact link on safetydoc.com. Thanks for listening.